Thank you all so much for the amazing pitches. Um, and so here we are at our health data and analytics panel. And I was actually in a discussion yesterday with a number of key health stakeholders. And data was a topic that just kept coming up and coming up and coming up. And it's, it's something we all think about in the industry. Um, but it comes with a lot of challenges. And so uh, I'd like to hear from you guys what you think the biggest challenges around health data are and, and using it to, in your platforms. And Patrick, I know you're passionate about this subject, so why don't you kick us off? Hello, hello, you can hear me. Yeah, I, I am pretty passionate about it, so I'll try and cut myself off from talking too long. But, you know, I think uh, Lindsay said early on that we have a wealth of health data here in Alberta. We're on the cutting edge of, of capture and, and being able to enable that innovation that we need, right? The big next step is always access. So how do you enable access in a responsible way that doesn't hinder the innovation? And I think, you know, amongst all the people here, we've got tons of really positive, proactive things that could make a difference in the health industry. We've got time and effort and capital and ideas that we want to put to work. And we're all aligned in terms of the stakeholders, right? There's, you know, no doubt that we want a lower cost of care and we want to increase quality of care. And we're staring at this data, you know, through the glass window and trying to figure out how to break it, right, and get access to it. And I think, um, you know, once we do that in a way that, that is responsible again, respects privacy, but doesn't stop us from moving quickly, we here in Alberta or elsewhere can just be on the cutting edge of innovation. And I don't want to lose that advantage. Blaine, anything to add there? I know uh, we're one of the few industries that still uses fax machines. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any other data challenges? A, a lot of the similar challenges. Uh, and I would say I would add to it by saying, uh, the, the standardization of the data is, is a challenge as well, right? So you've got, uh, if you think about um, acute care versus primary care, uh, there, there's so many different systems capturing that data that don't talk to each other, capture it in a different way. And then, of course, when, when you're trying to aggregate that data um, to do, you know, research studies, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of work that's required in between. And I think the other challenge that we face is, uh, is around uh, active data that requires someone to physically um, input data into into data systems. I mean, those are unique um, types of data that we collect uh, for, for our patients and uh, and for our clients. Um, so, I mean, that, again, that creates the opportunity. If we didn't have these challenges, we wouldn't be here today, right? For the most part. So, uh, that's why we exist. But uh, we we see the the solution to that being. Uh, you know, more passive data collection through automation, uh, as well as, of course, like a lot of digital tools and wearables are going to be a key part of that solution. Yeah, and that's probably a good transition to me because we collect a lot of wearable data and uh, your purchasing behavior, your activity behavior, uh, what you're consuming on your mobile phone is really important as a prediction. So I think many people here probably already are part of a loyalty system so we're connected to save on foods loyalty points petro points that has a lot of data as well and uh, if you're a user of like the pc health app right they're taking a lot of that data too but they're using it to surfacing up um, uh, currently products to you and certain journeys, but we take it one step further with a health grade which is a fico score so it kind of comes back to this trust part of data, um, we have this whole data for good initiative for the 2.8 billion data point, which is one of the largest sets actually in North America. And we work with the reinsurers to use that for underwriting and for risk scoring, for mortality and morbidity. So not only predicting um, where you are <laughs> and when you're going to have a health event, but uh, we also have a, like a diabetes score and a heart disease score. And our whole point, we just released it for free, it used to be just in our like Sun Life programs, the insurance programs or the employer programs. For the first time this month, we were able to release it for free for all consumers so that when you can, right, you download the free Optimity app, you actually have your health grade and all the sub scores in it. And I think this is a time where we really use the data for good and leverage some of the calculation capabilities to deliver more value and relevance to uh, the everyday human who then can take action, like I will walk more, I will sleep differently, I will consume differently, so that I'm scoring better and therefore living longer and being more proactive in my own health guardianship. Mm -hmm. 
So take away all the challenges. Everything's standardized. You have access to all your data. What's your company's superpower and, and the impact your technologies can have? Jordan, let's start with you. Yeah, so I mean, getting the data is probably one of the, the bigger challenges. So once that is solved, which is, you know, I think one of the goals of all of our companies, you know, our superpower really is going, that's really where the problem or the solution starts. Once you have the data, it comes down to how can you actually get physicians or decision makers to use the software, um, enjoy using it, and actually make better decisions from that data. We know that physicians are being burnt out at a higher and higher rate, and one of the number one reasons is the electronic health record system, which um, I'll say it, it kind of tortures them on a day-to-day -day basis. So if instead we can create data-driven solutions that they want to use, then we can begin changing day-to-day -day decisions. Yeah, and our superpower, I think, is in adoption and engagement. So I spent 10 years building technologies for pharma companies before for patient management. And sometimes even if you have all the solution, the patient don't adhere, <laughs> they don't use it. Uh, and that is even more prevalent in proactive tools. Many people have probably got access to some sort of corporate wellness website or things and you just don't use. So our superpower has been able to sustain that for millions of people now at 30 to 40 percent Mao. Uh, monthly active usage. And then we like to use a metric called WOW, so weekly active usage, and we can sustain that in the 15 to 20%, which is a huge um, change. And that's why our new modules go actually into other people's apps. So we're part of, so for example, there's a TPA in the US. They have telehealth, right, tel teledoc, but now post pandemic, that usage had dropped down to about 2% adoption, like it was in the teens before. And you probably have seen other um, EAP companies that are trying to buy these engagement solutions. So we offer those as modules. So that's our superpower, engagement and adoption. Yeah, I would say for us, our superpower is in, in our expertise and experience. We, we have an incredible team of clinicians and researchers that, that really know this space inside out and collectively uh, have experience in, in accessing data and data programs in over 60 countries, uh, 150 plus rare diseases, and, and through the work have actually had over 250 data releases and publications. So uh, we like to say it's not so much about the data, but it's, it's about the outcomes you create with that data. Um, so that, that's, uh, I would say, is, is, is our superpower. And, and at the end of the day, the impact that that would have downstream uh, for patients are, you know, a success for us is when a patient can actually access a therapy that they would not have otherwise been able to access. And for a pharmaceutical company, they can enter a country where they didn't previously have that, previously have that regulatory approval. So that's a tangible outcome we like to see. You mentioned such a good point about outcomes. And I think a lot of times people talk about like value on investment, that's because they don't truly have ROI. And I'm really proud to say, I think in this new generation of products, like we have eight published studies with universities that really moves quality, quality of life years and as well as the ICER scores. So being able to quantify that on populations of you know, 70,000 people, like th those are real outcomes that you can actually put a dollar value to. Yeah, I would say our superpower is on execution. So we really know how to build quickly and efficiently and do it on time and on budget. And we've done this you know, this will be our third go around on a piece of software for the medical industry that has a much more transformational value to it. We're really trying to target payers, providers, and patients with this solution. And when you dig into it, it touches them all exponentially. And it doesn't sound exciting, you know, automating an efficiency for these kind of admin type tasks, but they have a real consequence in the healthcare system. They really chip away at a physician's ability to do their job. So, you know, we're all about execution and doing it fast and quick. That sounds super exciting. Awesome. That, yeah, that is exciting. <laughs> yeah. So uh, time for one last quick one here, probably. Um, I, I want to, we, we talked a bit about outcomes on the other end of the panel there, but Jordan, I'd like to learn a little bit more about, about your guys' outcomes, what you, what you see as success and, and maybe what a, a potential project with, with some of the key stakeholders here in, in the audience would look like. Good question, yes. So for us, when we look at outcomes, you know, whenever we have a new customer and begin working with them, you realize how unstandardized workflows are and how everything, people just try and get their jobs done. And so they find ways to do that. And so when we come in, we come in, we analyze current state, look at how we can transform that into a standardized workflow that's data-driven. 
And it's really exciting at the end to talk to our customers and hear their excitement saying, yes, this is what we've been looking for for years, and now we're actually working in a way that, that feels right. Um, and so, you know, for us, that's a, that's a successful customer story, and we continue partnering with them through that journey. And then for us with corporate partners, uh, or anyone who's working with us, a successful project is one that is going to impact patient care, that's going to uh, allow patients to access better treatments, have less, of course, diagnostic error, and really get um, to a better state of health faster. Um, and since we're focused on chronic disease, a lot of that is focused around ensuring that they don't accumulate additional chronic disease burden and uh, manage to live the best life possible. Great, thank you all for the time.